This is a tutorial that's showing how to import songs into a worship song band. We made a few enhancements recently to make this a little bit easier. Um, so what I'm going to show you is how you would take a zip file containing wave stems that you've downloaded from some source like Multitracks or Loop Community or anybody providing wave stems and import them in the app. Now if the song is already prepared for worship song band, then you wouldn't need to do this. You just need that zip file and you can move it into your library. But if the song is not ready yet, this is a good way to do it. So the first thing you do is you take the zip file. So I'll just take a look inside this. Um, you wouldn't have to do this step. I'm just going to show you what's in here. Um, and there's some wave stems in here. So anyway, um, so again, you don't need to look inside it. Um, I'm just kind of showing you what the starting material looks like. So you're going to take that zip file, and if they're not zipped, then just zip them up. Um, you're going to drop it on top of Worship Song Band. What it's going to do is it's going to show you all of the audio files in that track, in that zip file. So those are right here. So what this new tool does is it's a, it's a way for you to assign the names for these files, and also if you want to bounce the files together, it's a way to, to show you that right here. So for instance, um, in this case, I know that's a reference MP3. I don't want that. This 148 is the click. So what you do is you click this little menu, click the category, and say, I want that to be named click. This one, I want to be the bass. These BGVs, I want to be BGV. Hues, Hues. Now, if you don't see the name you want in this menu, then you can, um, there's a couple of choices. You can call it like other, um, or um, also you can uh, type a name in here if you want. But we recommend that you use the names that are in here. The reason why is because they're tied to a standard set of names that we use for all the files that we do for libraries, so everything will be consistent. Drums, electric guitar. If you have multiple guitars, you can you can use them together. Um, and I'll show you the bouncing in a minute. Other pads, and you just go down through the tracks that you want. So there's a string pad. So if you want separate strings, you can say other strings, or you could say pads here if you want it. And if you said pads what would happen is you get both of those pads bounced together into one track, which is nice because you might, you might want to do that in order to save space because we have a limit of 15 audio files that you can use. And the main reason for that limit is not because the software is limited so much as because on mobile devices you want to limit the number of tracks. So um, in this case, I'm just going to say strings for that. Then I've got a lead pad here too. So I'll bounce that with the other pads. So both pad and pad lead are going to get combined together into one track called pad in my track. I'll do piano here. Now I've got three harmony tracks. What I'm going to do with those is bounce them all together into a choir track. So I'm going to get three choir tracks. And then it looks like I've got a, a lead piano here. So I'm going to bounce. I'm going to just say that one is the keys. The other one is the piano, and that one is the keys. OK, so now I've skipped the MP3 track, and I've selected everything else I want. I double check. I make sure I don't have more than 15 total. And it's not 15 in this side. It's 15 unique names in this side. Because remember, the unique names are going to get combined. I click Convert Tracks, and the software will start converting the tracks over. What you'll see is these little windows pop up here, um, and it's using a program called Sox that gets in, installed with the application to do the conversion. So if it's just converting, you'll see it convert. If it's bouncing, you'll see it actually write out separate files and then bounce them together using socks to create the final track. So this is an alternative to using a DAW or something to bounce these together. This will do it for you, so it's really nice for that.
So when all the conversions are done, which could take some time, you're going to see this message. Converted 11 tracks, song Resurrecting should now appear in your library. Now the name of this song in your library is going to be the name that was in the zip file. So you click OK, and then you should be able to find that song in your library. Just scroll down to the name. You'll see it right here. Resurrecting. If you show the song and click on the mixer, you'll see all the tracks that you just imported. So you see I have one choir track and so on. So now you can listen to it if you want. Intro, two, three, four. You can hear the different tracks. Build it up. Anyway, so now you have the whole song in one big section, so you can play it that way, but obviously you probably want to do sections. So the next thing you're going to do is press E, and what will happen here is that the song editor window will show up here, and you can just put the sections in the text if you want, if you know them, um, but there's also a GUI here to help you do that. So if you click this GUI, Edit Sections, what pops up is the sections that you have in the song. So the first thing you're going to want to do is put in the tempo. Um, and the tempo on this song was listed in the WAV file here. It was 148. So I'm going to put 148 in here. And enter that. That becomes my tempo. It's a 4-4 song. The key, I'm not exactly sure, I think the key was C, it says C there, so we'll go for that. And this stuff can all be changed later too by just opening up the song and editing. And then you want to put in the section information. And the way you do that is you just add sections and give them the number of beats. So right now we have one section with 478 beats. If I go to the beginning of the song here. Intro, two, three, four. So there's some number of intro beats. We'll call that eight beats. You can just kind of experiment and find the right one. I think it's probably more like 16, but because it's a, a high tempo. Intro, two, three, four. It's not 16, maybe it's 12. This one's a little weird because it starts like... Intro, two, three, four. Okay, that's right. If you want help counting beats, you can press T, and that counter will show you beats instead of time. Verse 2, 3, 4. So that intro was 64 beats. And just type the name. And then you just keep going. So then this is a verse. So I'll put V1. keep listening to the song and what this is actually doing when you type in this 
because it's actually adding the sections to this text file as you type. And then if you want to save that, it's, it's not saved right now the way it is. So you have to click Save Reload, and that'll, that'll save everything so that that's now your copy of the song. And you just keep going like that all the way through the song, adding sections. So I'll finish that off really quick. Okay, I've used my section editor to um, add all the sections to the song. The other thing that I did was I, just in the header section here, I added the name of the provider and the songwriters here. And it's actually in C sharp, not C, but um, anyway, so so this is this is what the section editor looks like when we're done. This is what the sections look. And then the next thing we want to do is add the chords. So the chord chart section is empty here. And I have a text chord chart that I've prepared here, which is the chord section. So you can see I've got chords for the intro, chords for verse one, <coughs> and so on. So the way that these chords work is that um, for each section, um, each unique section. So like if you have the chorus, you don't have to have four copies of the chorus in the chord chart. You just have to have the one. Um, you have the name of the section in, inside these brackets. Then you have these two line pairs. The top line is a chord line. The second line are the, the lyrics themselves. And so you lay out the chords and lyrics the way that you want them to look. And you put the chord over the word that you want that chord to start on in the chord display. Chord, lyric, chord, lyric. And if you want a lyric break, and what a lyric break is, is when you're using the program to display lyrics, it will break that many beats and start a new slide with those lyrics. So you just use the number of beats. So like 16 beats after the start of verse 1, I will start a new lyric. 16 beats after the start of verse 2, I'll start a new lyric. And then you just put each section in this chord chart, just like you were typing it in a text document. Chorus, verse 3, verse 4, and so on. Once you prepare these chords, and you can use a chord editor, like we use like one called Chordsmith to do this, but you can also just use a text editor and so on. Um, and you, you can just type them into the program like this too, if you want. Just use the text editor within the program to type them in. In this case, I prepare them outside the program. I'll just copy go to the text editor to the chord section in the program and paste. So now that's my chords in there. Or I could just edit them right in here. I could just start typing right inside this, this chord editor. Then when I hit Save Reload, I'll hide this Edit Sections thing. Now my chords show up in the program, basically aligned to that section. And if I type L in here, I'll see a preview of my lyric display and I can see what happens with my lyric breaks. Intro, two, three. Four. Verse two, three, four. Chorus, two, three, four. Now in that case, I think those uh, 
lyric breaks are a little late. So I can just go to my editor here and I can say I want that to be 14 beats instead, for instance. In the verses. The only thing that'll change is when the lyrics swap. So if I can play it again and see if that's better. Intro, two, three, four. So that looked about right to me. And then once you've gotten the song with its sections and its lyrics and its chords all done, you're finished. You hit the save reload to save it. That's how the song remains in your library and you're ready to use it. And if you look at your library folder here, I have a really big one. So I'll search it on date modifying. WSB resurrecting.zip is that file. It's now 77 megabytes, and that file can be moved to any installation of Worship Song Band on your iPad or on your Android ready to use. And the only data that's inside this file is the data that Worship Song needs to run. So, so that's our, our song importing tutorial with some new tools, the section editor and the track importer window, um, which should make processing songs for use in worship song band really fast.